cheers to episode two. Cheers to episode two. I'll at you. Tell us, my friend. So, forewarning for anybody watching this on YouTube, um, 99.9% sure you will not find episode one. <laughs> <laughs> it got lost in the archives. It's somewhere. there somewhere. <laughs> If we you're, still got if, segments of it somewhere <laughs> in the cloud, maybe. Oh, man. If you are a close friend or family, then maybe you'll see it someday. Yeah, maybe. Welcome to episode two, Mutant City Horror. A little bit more official. We got the signage over there. Um, as you can tell from the background, today we're reviewing Pumpkinhead. Pumpkinhead. Not this guy, though. <laughs> uh, delay. Whatever. <laughs> Well done. You know what's... You, it makes it easier when people already have songs made about the movie that you're reviewing. Like, it makes the intro process earlier, or easier. Yeah, absolutely. We recorded an intro earlier, um, which, I mean, we were just kind of bullshitting, did some video, and m- maybe, right? Maybe we'll get Raymond to do some special effects, or... And we'll get a you know shot at night, whatever. But uh, we got to work on the intro. Yeah, definitely. Crawl before we walk, kind of thing. Yeah. So what's up, man? What are we doing here? Well, today uh, we're doing a a special. Well, it's not only our our first um, act of recording, which we're going to be posting. Um, today's a, a a special edition as well because we're nearing the great you know uh, holiday of Halloween. And um, we thought we'd do something a little bit special. So, you know, uh, one of our fan favorites that you guys could see up there. Uh, I mean, who doesn't love a good pumpkin head, right? Um, so we've gathered here today to re- revisit this iconic creature. Um, uh, iconic movie. A lot, a lot of legendary faces, it looks like. And... Um, yeah, let's delve into it, I guess. The great Lance Henriksen. The great Lance Henriksen. 1988 pumpkin head dictorial. Did I say that right? Dictorial? Dictorial. Dic- dictorial. <laughs> I don't think we're going with dictorial. <laughs> um, Directorial debut. Yeah, Stan, Stan Winston. Winston. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, he also wrote this thing? Yeah, you know what? And that's that's actually something I found out just recently, uh, you know, like you, I haven't seen this movie in quite some time. I mean, we knew about it, and we knew uh, Stan Winston's design, uh, you know, very well. But I actually didn't realize until recently that this was Stan Winston's film. Like, I, I was kind of blown away about that. Uh, wasn't expecting that at all. I just thought he did the effects. I didn't realize it was his movie altogether. I I never even knew about the dude before um, today. Just kind of, you know, doing quick uh, searches on the movie. But I was surprised to see that, like, his IMDb page, I think, has more entries for... um, Not not very much on the directing side, but um, on the special effects, for sure. There's a ton of those. And then I think he's got a bunch of uh, producer credits as well. But one of the things I found funny... uh, Not funny, but interesting, was he is um, credited for... T2 3D. I didn't look very far on that, but I think wasn't that the video that they played on the Terminator experience at Universal Studios? Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, that was the Universal Studios thing. I actually remember it too. I I, I want to say it's it was it kind of picked up the storyline right right after T2. Um, I mean, well, further into the future, yeah. but obviously, you know. It kind of picked up where that one left off, and yeah, yeah, you, you actually got a point there. Um, he is he he's the one that designed the Terminator that we know, and um, he's he's responsible for a lot of uh, uh, movie icons that um, you know we've seen growing up and stuff, um, all the way up to the Jurassic Park dinosaurs. Yeah, yeah, did crazy. I didn't I didn't know any of that stuff. Um... It's so weird because a lot of the movies that he's credited for working on in those special effects are movies that I've seen and movies that I love. And then to find out this random guy <laughs> produced the he did all the special effects and then goes and directs this movie I had a little before or whatever. But still, nonetheless, um, it was crazy to check out. I'm going to pull up his IMDb real quick. 
Yeah, I also uh, I I also found out too uh, while reviewing it as well that not only did he uh, th- was this his directorial de- br- debut uh, he he um, since uh, he was kind of you know had his hands full during the production of this film uh, it was actually some of his understudies some of his students and stuff like that that actually were were doing all the the, the heavy FX and stuff like that for this film so. For Pumpkinhead? For Pumpkinhead, yeah. Mm, mm, mm. So um, that makes it quite interesting as well. Yeah. Um, look at, he's got 40 special effects credits on IMDb, with the last one being Shutter Island from 2010. I didn't know about that one. I didn't realize. Yeah. Wow. Holy shit. Terminator Salvation, the bench warmers, animatronic <laughs> robot effects. Oh, for that the little uh, butler robot. Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines, Jurassic Park 3, AI. Fucking love AI. Yeah, it was a good movie. End of Days, another Schwarzenegger movie. Inspector Gadget. Ugh, rip. Uh, Terminator 2, Judgment Day. Predator, another Schwarzenegger movie. And Terminator. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, he's, he's got know. quite the extensive resume. So. I wonder if uh, Peter, my youngest brother, Peter, had even seen the Terminator 2 3D experience at Universal. Assuming that's they're one in the same. Because I think I had only been there once or twice. I remember seeing it at least once for sure. And like the room kind of moving around, kind of in that Universal way where they don't even have a lot of rides anymore. It's just like more like room experiences. Yeah. Uh, but it was, it was just kind of like that. Um, and Peter's like the hugest Terminator fan. So, yeah, because that was actually very likely before his time. Now that I'm thinking of it. Uh, Peter was born in 91. So if that thing came out in 96, which is what the credit says, then he was only five. So even if he did experience it, he probably wouldn't remember at this point. Yeah, probably. I mean, you know, who knows if he was even a fan when he was five. <laughs> I mean, I don't I don't. Um, <laughs> yeah, he might have been. Something to say about a five-year-old being a fan of Terminator 2. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's got, it's got a kind of harsh punch in the face a little bit. Uh, some questionable parenting skills uh, involved in that answer. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know what that says about my, my mom and dad, you know, uh, with, you know, being very familiar with, like, Return of the Living Dead when I was, like, six. You know, um, actually, that was an issue in my elementary school, in fact, that uh, I loved that movie so much that it just happened to be that uh, you, I guess I was talking about it too much. And, uh, and I guess the school had to call my mom and dad and tell them to tell me to stop talking about Return of the Living Dead because I'm... I'm promoting a movie that's not fit for kids of that that age and stuff. So, <laughs> can you imagine the note that comes home with you pinned to your shirt, Mr. and Mrs. Vitorino? Can you please stop with the zombies, please? Thank you. <laughs> Speaking of which, I got my uh, "Are you ready to part or do you want to party?" Uh, tar, uh, not Tarman, but the the skull that come out of the grave on uh, Return of the Living Dead. That's right, the Skeleton Man. Yeah, I uh, contributed to the Kickstarter for the official Return of the Living Dead website um, startup. So, paid like 70, 75 bucks, eighty bucks when the Kickstarter was open, and got this shirt. Perla got one with the. Um, the half zombie that they put on the table. Um, oh, yeah. Um, what else did I get? I got um, some coasters. I got I got a bunch of stuff, dude. It was pretty legit. But, like, they have so much more fucking swag on there now. And I, I'll go on there every once in a while. And I just want to spend all my fucking money on that website, man. <laughs> you guys hear that? You should be sponsoring our program. <laughs> FYI. No. Mail checks to seven. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about Pumpkinhead a little bit. I mean, fucking, let's start with Lance Henriksen, dude. Bishop well, from fucking well, Aliens. Well, first and foremost, let's just say uh, at least this. Uh, R.I.P. Stan Winston. Mm. You know, he's not with us anymore. I'd pour one out, but uh, my wife would get pissed. So uh, let's yeah, drink one out to him. Uh, salute. drink one for him. It was so funny to, for me to see him in this movie because this is made a couple years after Aliens, right? That's a big fucking... 
blockbuster, high budget, you know, it's got really good traction from the first one. And like, you're like, yeah, it's a big budget movie. And then here you are starting in, or starring in Pumpkinhead, which is kind of deemed as, uh, I won't say the gold standard, but uh, from what I was reading, it's like, hey, when people talk about making a good B rated movie, they talk about Pumpkinhead. And it's like, all right. Yeah. The budget on this thing was like three and a half million. It only grossed like 4.3. So didn't really make a lot of money on the movie. And uh, I don't know a lot of people who've seen this movie. I have, I'm kind of the same way, but I also think a lot of people may have watched it and kind of pushed it, like swept it under the rug. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, may have seen it at one point, but totally forgot they seen it. You know, it's, it's actually been a long time for people to actually revisit Pumpkinhead. It, it had its fair share of sequels. Um, I want to say there was like some kind of series or something I read about that I didn't even know of, but I, I, I don't know too much about that. Like a like a TV series? I, I don't because I, I, I think I'd exactly read that they were know. trying to do like a comic, like a four part comic it, or graphic novel, and I think it only got I think it only had like two published. Like they published maybe the first two, and then it was canceled. Yeah, there was yeah there was a canceled comic of it. I I do remember that. I remember hearing about that as well. Um, yeah, it, it spawned a few sequels, and I want to say like like I said, some kind of series of sorts. I'm not too clear as to how that went. Uh, maybe maybe we can find it. Hmm. But yeah, I mean, again, not a lot of people know about it. Small budget. Um, doesn't look like, you know, it's got the highest of ratings, 6.2 out of 10. Um, and then to see, you know, Lance Hendrickson um, coming out and doing that. And it was funny because I got lost in his IMDb. I was like, what else have I seen him in? Because I know he's in a ton of shit. And his IMDb page goes forever. <laughs> and I don't think I've seen most of what he's been in. Probably yeah. closer to, like, all of what he's been in. Well, he... Uh, it, it, Around that time frame, he, he, he was in a lot just around that small window of time. And, you know, it's kind of... I I wouldn't say his career dwindled in anything by any means. He's a very iconic actor. We all love Lance Henriksen. Um, You know, he chose to kind of stick with the uh, B-rated movie path, which I, I can't hate on. Uh, I, sometimes, you know, you find a genre that finds you and you stick with that. And I, I think that's kind of what he was doing as far as that goes. Um, I, I like to bring up uh, one uh, the elephant in the room, I guess you'd say. Uh, <laughs> I like uh, how the opening sequence uh, of Pumpkinhead, uh, the first shot we, uh, we get of Lance Henriksen is, uh, is a very shirtless... <sighs> Fucking beefcake. <laughs> yeah, the guy, you know, uh, definitely wasn't ashamed. Very, very, you know, chiseled for that time. Not what I expected. But, yeah, the whole, uh, the whole, uh, like, hillbilly kind of uh, vibe and stuff. Definitely not something I've normally seen him in. Usually he gears towards, like, sci-fi. So you're know, saying but, if yeah. Farmers Only was a thing in 1988 he'd be the poster child definitely absolutely <laughs> i mean why not the guy had a hairstyle for days on that movie remember that <laughs> holy crap yeah the only thing it reminded me of was that scene in aliens where he gets ripped in half oh yeah good old bishop yeah Got ripped <laughs> in half by the queen alien I will say, going through his IMDb page, I saw that he was listed as a character named Brain Eater from a movie called Ginger Clown. And in my notes, I had circles, or not circles, but question marks and then happy faces. Because I was like, I don't know what this is, but uh, it sounds like something I need to watch. Yeah, it sounds interesting as fuck. I, I don't think I've ever heard of anything quite like that. Ginger Clown? Yeah, <laughs> never heard of it. <sighs> this is what I'm talking about, though. Episode 3, Ginger Clown. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of uh, it's kind of funny how who you'll find in the archive of these old films and stuff, you know. In fact, we were just talking about that uh, earlier. That uh, I don't even know her name. You know. Oh uh, my God! <laughs> Guess who plays Ginger Clown? Oh, oh. I'll give you three guesses. <laughs> three. And you should only need two. Ginger Clown. Who plays famous horror clowns? I mean, I, the only thing I can think of is Tim Curry. There you go. All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, all right. Fucking Tim Curry. 
plays Talk about typecasting. What Ginger Clown. Lance Henriksen plays Brain Eater. Then Michael Winslow is in the movie, too. Do you remember Michael Winslow? Michael Winslow, yes. He's the, um, he's the guy from, well, uh, Police Academy, right? Uh, am, I, am I getting that correct? Yeah, the, the sound effects. The sound, the sound guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is, is that guy yeah. still around? Uh, he is, and I uh, I just saw him on some, uh, I think uh, Perla showed me a video of him on America's Got Talent. No shit. And he came out and he did his thing. He's like, ah, he still got it. Man. Actually, on stage and everything, we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On camera, on TV, in front of a whole bunch of people. And yeah, he came out and did it, dude. That's crazy. I, I, now, here's the thing I don't know how old that video was. Um, well, how long has that show been around? I'm, it feels like a long time. Which show uh, was maybe it? it just feels that way. America's <laughs> Got Talent? Yeah. I, I, it, can't have, it can't have been that long. Uh, the video's from July 9th, 2021. So, yeah, he's still there. He, I mean, he looks like he, you know, aged a little bit, but, like, he still looks like his old, his old self. Yeah, some of these actors, man, they very rarely age, and when they do, it's only just a little bit. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, um, I hope... I also want to bring up, by the way, um, besides the Lan- Lance Henriksen shirtless thing, um, I, let me rewind that a little bit. Did you notice the guy that was running for his life at the very beginning? Uh, you know, he's going around, he's you know getting scared by everything that jumps in his path and stuff, and he's pounding on the door asking him to let him in. Mm-hmm. Was it just me, or did he look like a beaten and bloody like Gary Busey kind of character? <sighs> He kind of looked like that to me. I didn't catch my eye. But since we're talking about lookalikes, the you might want to look this up. The the girl who plays like the main blonde in the movie. I think there was a couple times when we just watched it where we were like, "Oh my god, she looks exactly like fucking Linda Hamilton." Like, yes, thank you. Linda like Hamilton. Four times yeah, that's right. And you, you nailed it at that once. If we were both thinking the exact same thing. You know, I actually tried Which to Which is look weird to me because the dude did special effects on Terminator. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, what are the odds that she would look like Linda Hamilton and he's got a tie to Terminator? I mean, it's it doesn't mean anything, but to me it's a trip. No, it's, it's, there's, there's actually some slim facts there because it uh, turns out um, the reason why Lance Henriksen even was in Pumpkinhead from the get-go is because he is actually friends with Stan, or was friends of Stan Winston's, and... Um, and he knew him because of the Terminator. And this is why he was actually given, you know, a role in Pumpkinhead. And as I, as I told you before, apparently... Wait, wait, wait. I don't understand. How, where does Lance Hendrickson come in are you, are you, well, with Terminator? Yeah, with Terminator. My bad. My bad. Uh, yeah, he, he was in Terminator with uh, Lan, Lance Hendrickson, uh, which is uh, what... Oh, he was the detective in the first one. Yeah, remember? I totally forgot yeah. about that shit. Yeah, the, the, the police station. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he was in there. Um, and uh, he had wanted like Lance, circle of life, Lance Henriksen to play this part. But apparently Lance Henriksen didn't think it was going to be a good enough film or he just didn't want to do it or whatever the case may be. I just well, didn't think it was his thing. There was some stuff that I read where like it got picked up by a studio and that studio ended up going bankrupt and then i think uh fucking lack of uh looking here i think united artists picked up the rights or the to the story or the movie and then finished it out but again i mean it had a budget of three mil three and a half million which i don't know how good or bad that is for 1988 um so you know given that it was kind of in the hands of a bankrupt uh, production company and didn't have that big of a budget. Probably, I mean, shit. If we look at the number between Aliens and Pumpkinhead for budget, I'm sure there's a huge fucking discrepancy. <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so I can understand like some reluctance to like do something that's not. I mean, I don't want to say it was beneath them, but at the same time, the he dude was have... just coming off some fucking blockbuster movie, right? I don't know. Maybe it was me. Like I, I would probably think like that. Like I'd be like, okay, you know, I just did 
some huge blockbuster movie. Maybe I'll just take a break and do some shitty movies here. There, I'm not saying Pumpkinhead's a shitty movie. It's a great movie, but I just, uh, you know, it, you kind of go from one spectrum to the other and stuff. And yeah, yeah, maybe that played a role, or maybe he just wanted to kind of, you know, branch out elsewise or whatever. And um, it just, it, as it turned out, it was just kind of funny that. Um, he read some part in the script that just totally changed his mind. And I was telling you about that when we were watching it. In fact, that, 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 you know, when he got revisited, uh, uh, by, by his, his child's ghost, uh, that somehow that sank in or whatever, but we'll, we'll get into that as we talk about the movie a little bit. So it's more clear for you guys. Aliens had an estimated budget of eighteen and a half million dollars. <laughs> well, it made ten, it made ten million dollars its opening weekend. If you take the budget for Pumpkinhead and combine it with the amount of money that it made overall, it's still less than ten million dollars. So, mean, like between the two, like it's very small. Yeah, like it's a small project. Yeah, and then sometimes it doesn't even necessarily mean, you know, without well, the, the... You get that thing every once in a while where, like, some artists or some actors are like, hey, you know, I'm a big blockbuster type actor, but, like, I want to take a step back and do, like, an arts... Like, I want to do, like, an artsy film or do, like, an independent or something like that that usually has, like, some meaning to them or something that, you know, I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah. Doesn't doesn't read and sound like Pumpkinhead, <laughs> right? Absolutely. So you're you're right. Maybe may have been a, a step back for him or whatever the case may be. But he was there. He's a he, now he's part of a, a very legendary film as we know it. Um, uh, let me check this out real fast. Um, have you noticed that part by the way when he's you know helping his kid wash his hands and stuff like that? It, it was very normal parenting and stuff, but then it got a little bit creepy and stuff at some point. It kind of made me wonder, what's going on here? Did you no, notice that at all? No. no. What are you talking he's about? He's there. He's rubbing his kid's A man head. can't, like, help his well, child? I, and I gave it that kind of leeway. Like, you know, I was like, all right, you know, he's he's just a very good father figure. You know, he's trying to make sure his son washes his hands properly, but... Uh, the, whole, the, the whole whispering in the ear and stuff like that it just got a little bit weird but you no know, maybe that's maybe that's what people do over in these uh small like unknown towns with swamps and stuff like that you know well did you see the other kids from like the shanty town <laughs> i'd be helping my kid wash up too man <laughs> well yeah absolutely you gotta, you gotta make sure you he, he just dirt himself. farmers man <laughs> And yeah, those people, man, we're talking about living at the the bottom of the grid. Like, I'm, it was funny to me that the dude was clenched, like trying to like like clean himself with the dirtiest rag I've ever seen in my whole life. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's what I remember. I was making a joke too about you know their clothing attire and stuff like that too. Like you know his. Well, shirt. you asked you asked about Lance <laughs> Hendricks' uh, shirt, right? Right, right. It looked like a tunic, like something that you would see in like a. A renaissance fair. There was something I read where he picked out the entire wardrobe for the character. Oh, I mean, he did <laughs> a really kick-ass job <laughs> finding the, the, the right wardrobe, I guess. You know, <laughs> I, I don't know how to, you know, I don't know how to go back. <laughs> That's crazy. So, going through the IMDb and checking out some of the um, the people in the movie... Saw that uh, Blossom was in it. Uh, I love her. I don't know her name. I I do know her name. I just don't know how to pronounce it. Yeah, it's it's definitely. uh, um, Do you do you not? Are you in the same boat? Do you not? Do you know it? And you just can't pronounce it, or you just you don't know it? I'm still looking at it right now, and I still yeah. I remember seeing it multiple times. You know I. It, it actually, believe it or not, I didn't even put two and two, to, two together. I didn't know that Blossom was the same girl from from Big Bang Theory. I had no idea. And then when I found out later, I was like, that makes all kinds of sense because I I heard that she was some kind of brainiac, rocket scientist type and stuff. It it does kind of you know follow 
uh, what I heard about her. But uh, as far as her name goes, no. Nah, I'm going to take a crack. You ready? All right, go for it. Mayim Bailek. Bailek. Bailek? I am so sorry, Mayim. <laughs> <laughs> if that's your name. I, I, I hope and pray that I am saying that correctly. Because... <laughs> I never tried. I mean, that's sometimes I will refrain from saying it just because I don't want to mess it up that bad. And the thing about it is, like, I see her name all over, right? Like, you see it in the credits for Big Bang. You saw, I saw it here. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay. And I hear it on the radio or I hear it on TV. And then I just, I never say it. I always just say, uh, Blossom. My bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's perfectly fine. <laughs> Can you tell me why, though, when I went to go look her up, the second person right next to her just happens to be Joey Lawrence? Like, yeah, because he was on Blossom. Oh, was he? A ch- yeah. well, this is, remember, like, I I was a kid when that came out. I didn't, yeah, you know, I probably didn't even watch the show that much. I probably even only watched the show because my older sister was watching it or something. I don't even remember, per- you know, per- Perla much about it. would watch Blossom a lot. Oh yeah, which is funny because now when I hear the title Blossom, that I think of Joey Lawrence because he was in that show and he always, he would always, he had that catchphrase, right? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I didn't yeah. see. I didn't even realize that's where you know everyone got it from. I thought it was just some regular thing that he did. You know, kind of like uh, oh, kind of like Charlie Sheen's like you know Tiger's Blood thing. You know, I just. <laughs> It's something that followed him around, or I don't know. Dude, if we ever get the opportunity to like open a restaurant, or even if we should try to open up like a little convenience store or something, because I would love to sell Tiger's Milk or uh, no, Tiger's Blood. Sorry, Tiger's Milk is a real thing. Didn't mean you. Sorry, <laughs> Tiger's Blood. Um, and then I'd love to sell Fight Milk from Always Sunny. Fight Milk. Yeah, do you? That's yeah. like the. It was like the. Protein drink that the Mac had made for working out and shit. <laughs> Sounds like something there, you do. That's probably an episode I didn't catch though. It, but that's funny. <laughs> in the one episode where they did create it, it just kind of came a recurring topic down the line. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Sometimes they get those catchy things. I, you know, I was just thinking about that too. You know, uh, I was thinking about the whole Nightman Dayman thing and. Remember how that lasted probably like two straight seasons. The first one, they were creating the song. <laughs> the next season over, they were making a play about it. Okay. So <laughs> funny funny story about uh, that. After the they did the episode with the play, because Charlie had made that whole fucking thing just so he could uh, um, uh, ask the waitress to marry him. Mm-hmm. Everybody was talking about that shit. It was awesome. It was funny. Did you see it? Blah, blah, blah. Cut to um, the Coachella the following year. It was still where like Coachella wasn't too popular, but was kind of gaining some traction. And you would start to see these like um, made up uh, lineups come out like months before the show. Like people were like putting together, um, either something that was fake or like, Hey, this is my wish list of like shit that I would like to see at Coachella this year. And one of them had the, it said like Saturday night on the side stage or whatever, it's always sunny performing a uh, nightman. And I was like, and it, I thought it was true because they had been touring. The cast had been touring doing that on stage in a couple different cities so at the same time i saw it i was like oh i fucking love to see that shit live <laughs> that's it, it just never know, happened i remember that got brought up actually with you and some, some of our friends and stuff I, I remember you guys talking about that too and i was always curious as to whether or not that was a real thing i i you know but but now given the the the, the facts and you're telling me that it was like i i, I kind of wonder now so uh, did it kind of play out the same way it did in the show? I mean, did they botch it up the same way? Hey, or, man, you, know? you got to pay the troll toll. <laughs> <laughs> in order to get into that boy's hole. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't going to finish hole. it, but all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, man, that show is something else. Uh, <laughs> how the uh, fuck did we get there? I don't know, man. We just kind of <laughs> drifted, man. It has something to do with, uh, you know what's in my hand right now i think um i do want to get back to uh another 
there, there's another star that we're actually forgetting about that's actually in the movie. And the, again, this is something that I just found out recently. Um, the dog, the little boy's <laughs> dog. I saw that. Now you're you're probably wondering why I'm pointing out the boy's dog. Well, as it turns out, you know, the dog himself is a very familiar actor that we. So the dog's name in the movie is Gypsy. Gypsy, yes. But his real name is Mushroom. His real name is Mushroom. Or her name. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. And I can't tell by either way because Mushroom sounds like it would be a boy's name, but then Gypsy sounds like it'd be a girl name. So maybe it is a boy or male. um, And they just made it a female for the movie. um, But uh, theoretically, I think Mushroom can go either way. So who knows? Yeah, I mean, it's the dog. The, The dog, yeah. Well, that dog just happens to be in um, in Gremlins. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the uh, it's the dog in Gremlins. I forgot his name in there. Do you remember? Uh no. Well, so it's been a, a couple big hits. I'd say, you know, familiar face. Fun fact. Yes. Mushroom did all his stunts in <laughs> Pumpkinhead. <laughs> Watch out, Jackie Chan. <laughs> Where do you think you got the idea for that shit? <laughs> right. Uh, Gremlins. Oh, man. Would you... Um, Gremlins is a Christmas movie, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I would put that in the Christmas genre. Maybe it's something we can visit, uh, you know, for the for the holiday season, maybe. It's a uh, mogwai. <laughs> it's a mogwai. Mogwai. There's uh, some pretty interesting facts that... I would like to reveal about that, but we'll wait till a time we're actually uh, we're presenting that film. Um, let's see here. So I just now uh, I thought I brought up the fact that you know. It's Sorry, I'm stalling dog. for time because I'm looking up the do- I'm looking up Mushroom's name. And- <laughs> keep going. Sorry, keep going. <laughs> Can you find time. out whether he's time. female or male? <laughs> I- I'm looking into it. <laughs> All right. Barney was his name. Her name was its name. So he's probably a male. Probably a male. And um, oh, they refer to him as he. Mushroom was a was oh, rip. Mushroom was a cute and cuddly canine thespian who appeared in two classic '80s horror features. He portrayed Barney in Joe Dante's 1984 blockbuster smash Gremlins. Dante on the DVD commentary for Gremlins praises Mushroom as one of the best actors in the <laughs> cast. Damn, what's that say about the rest of them? I don't know. I mean, you got quite a bit too. Uh, you know, you got you, you remember that guy Dick Miller? Like he's like in every 80s movie, but he's always a side guy, but no. he's a familiar face. You know Dick Miller. Yeah, look him up. You're, I mean, I I mean, he's been in like I kind of know everything. Dick Miller. <laughs> I'm looking at a picture of him now, super old, but Okay. Yeah, Terminator, Burbs, Gremlins, The Howling. The mm-hmm. fuck? How do I not know this guy? You gotta know him, dude. Dude, on the Terminator, he was the guy that that Arnold was buying the guns off of. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. I. Fuck. <laughs> okay. Here's the thing, mm-hmm. right? So you know that guy. That guy's in all the fucking movies, right? Right. But then, like, I don't know his name. Right. That's a common thing. Yeah, no, it happens. It definitely happens. Okay, so the other night, um, Pearl and I are watching this movie called Hell or High Water. Have you heard of it? I think I have. It sounds familiar. It's got uh, Chris Pine, Ben Foster. You know Ben Foster? Oh, God. I know I do. Okay, oh, yeah. okay, okay. Uh, I'm going to tell you where you know him from because he's been in other shit. But Is I'm he gonna on tell- Kingsman? Mm, I don't know. Oh, sorry, I didn't know that. No, go on. I forgot, I forgot where I was going. Stupid cranberry ben, vodka. No. <laughs> I know. No, no. What, what was his name? We were just talking about him. Um, Dick Miller. <laughs> well, no, the guy after Dick Miller, though. Uh, um. Anyways. Yeah. I think um, that's so, watching. Okay, so we're saying Dick Miller is one of those guys who's in everything, but maybe you don't know his name. And then you see him and you're like, oh, yeah, I fucking totally know who that guy is. So a couple of days ago, Perler and I are watching Hell or High Water. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah. Okay. Jeff Bridges plays the sheriff. And ben Foster, Chris Pine, they play brothers, bank robbers. It's a fucking great movie. I don't know if you've ever seen it or not, but it, no. it's worth watching. Okay. So 
towards the end, there's a scene where Chris Pine is in um, a bank and he's giving um, some checks to a loan officer. And the loan officer is motherfucking Richard Christie. Go ahead, I'll wait. <laughs> All right, fine. I'm gonna have to look him up. Because- no, no, no. I'll spare. I'll spare you the look up. Richard Christie is the dad from Small Wonder. Oh God damn! How the fuck do I know who Richard Christie is? But I don't know who Dick Miller is. Like <laughs> Richard Christie, I've only seen him in one thing, and it was Small Wonder. And like I barely watched that show when I was a kid. And then all these fucking movies that Dick Miller's been in, and I don't know his name. <laughs> Stupid. My brain is dumb. No, no. It's kind of funny, too, because uh, that that was... Uh, I remember Small Wonder. Small Wonder, right? You said mm-hmm. Small Wonder. All right. I remember it. And fun fact, between you and I, we've been friends for a very long time. And this isn't the first time anything's been brought up about Small Wonder. So I can tell you right now, I feel like that, that show at some point made an impact in your life. So... Given you know, given that I I I think that's probably where, you know, you you can hold on to uh, you know somebody's name that most of us probably don't even know and stuff. I I get it. You know, it kind of happens sometimes. I mean, you know what I think it is, is I was not a fan of the of the kid. Um, who played Jamie in that show? Oh God, wasn't he fucking annoying, dude? <laughs> That kid was probably my least favorite character in that whole freaking show. I will say the idea of a robotic sister sounds kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. But he always hid behind her. I guess you would. I don't know. I mean, it's a robot. Who cares? What's that kid's name? Jerry Superian? Did did he even do anything afterward? Mm, No. Mr. Belvedere, Small One. No, he didn't. His last credit is Small Wonder. No shit. He had some Mr. Belvedere before that, maybe one episode, Highway to Heaven. Mm. Yeah, nothing, dude. That's crazy. Uh, maybe I, Am I even looking at the right guy? I don't even know. Fuck. I, I yeah, only, Jamie Lawson. Yeah, I was yeah, going to yeah. say, I only remember what he looked like as a kid. If I were to look at him now, I wouldn't know who the fuck I was looking at. <laughs> I always wanted to punch that kid in the face. Not the actor, just the character. No, just say you want to punch the actor in the face. (laughs) For being an annoying little fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, uh, back to Pumpkinhead. A couple of shout-outs real quick. I love the fact that when they showed um, Henriksen's kid. I don't even remember his name when we just watched it like two hours ago. Um, his fucking glasses, dude. I was like, damn, those things are like Coke bottles. And then like 15 minutes into the movie, this one of the guys is like, man, look at those Coke bottles. Like, fuck, man, (laughs) my references are so fucking old. (laughs) Cause they fit right into the time. Pulling eighties references. And that's just how old I am. Uh, It was pretty close to the nineties at least. Yeah. yeah, Whatever. (laughs) We're still far away from that. In fact, yeah, that was all the notes I had. Other than that, man, I was just enjoying the show, the movie. Dude, I remember the first time I watched that movie, I was living in um, Ontario, California, not Canada. Yeah, let's make that clear. <laughs> um, and I was, I was hanging out with Ricky. I and, remember Ricky. And we used to, we only lived like four or five houses down from each other. And we would go up to this place called Video Adventures. But we were lazy, so we just called it Video Ventures. And fucking when you can rent movies, VHS and shit. Old movies were $2.15. Anything that wasn't a new release was like $2.15 or $2.45 or something like that. And the new releases were $3.23. And then you you can rent it for three days. And they would tell you, you know, there's the return date and you know, bring it back rewound and yeah, put the receipt in the sure case. Like, <laughs> fucking love those days. Yeah. So we used to go up and just base movies off of their fucking, their boxes, just off of the, the, the cover art. I'm like, hey, this one looks 
cool or scary or we look at the back in the pictures and the only standard we had for the movies that we rented they had to be rated r yeah because those those are the good ones well you know they're gonna be the edgy ones or they're gonna be the ones i, I don't know if that just comes with um us growing up you know and stuff like that i don't know if it's like one of those things it's like r-rated means bad but it means bad but good you know or this is something maybe we shouldn't be watching, so let's go for it kind of thing and stuff. I don't know. I just kind of get that feeling. This is kind of how me and a couple of buddies of mine actually wound up watching, like, Sorority House Massacre in, like, yes. junior high or some shit. I don't know. But, yeah, I definitely think that plays a role. But you're right. The, um, well, the if you go back, right? right? Okay, so this is, you know, early, mid-90s. So we're we're renting movies that are 80s ish yeah early mid 80s so they're at least 10 years old and a lot of those movies probably should be rated r but are rated like pg-13 so i think the standards were a little bit different back then so the rated r shit was like if you got a rated r it's like oh shit that's that's top-notch stuff right there which i would i would say the rated r then is probably equivalent to like NC-17 now. But even then, I don't even think NC-17 even exists anymore. And I think we're just so desensitized because of all the stuff that exists on streaming and and just with the internet, everything is kind of readily available to you. It's like, really? Like, I don't know. Yeah. Not as impactful as it used to be. Yeah, times were in it different different place back then and stuff um there, there's a whole thing actually about that and stuff I, I won't go too far into it but it was actually how pg-13 was uh actually created you know steven spielberg made made up the idea for pg-13 didn't know that till like i don't know a few months back or something like so that. it was just like g pg and then r yeah, or I think, maybe yeah. maybe it was even uh, I don't know. I just I, speculated. I, I think it was really just like yeah, like you said, G P G R, or maybe even just P G and R. Um, there there uh, was no medium standard, and I think it was um, uh, you know whoever's responsible for the rating system. What are they called? The uh, the MPAA. Yeah, the MPAA. He had gone to them. Steven Spielberg did, and. Uh, he he asked them, well, what can I do to you know where we could do edgy films that aren't exactly R rated, but they're a little bit edgier than PG because these are sti- the restrictions are killing them, you know. Because you go back, you look at the old Indiana Jones films and stuff like that. Actually, I'm sorry, those weren't his. Those were um, were, were they? Uh, what's his names? Um, they were. Oh, fuck, what's his name? Indiana Jones is Spielberg. Is it? I thought it's Spielberg some... and George Lucas. George Lucas. Okay, that yeah. was the other one. Um, but yeah, yeah. You, and you remember those. I mean, the first movie, you had the guy melting away and stuff like that. You have a lot of gore and stuff, but it only had a PG on it and stuff. So, you know, they, he tried to come with come up with a fair balance. And uh, uh, I guess PG-13 was born after that. Wow. We should do a little review on the MPAA. I hear... Like, I remember some documentaries and some stories coming about, like, how... The people who do all the ratings and stuff and who the people who screen movies to give them ratings is like this tight knit, like underground secret society of people that like nobody knows who they yeah. are and all no, kinds it's of a, shit. It's very, almost like a secret society in itself. You're right. Um, and, you know, they're supposed to have their own thing going on. No one's supposed to have any ties to them and stuff like that. No one even knows exactly all the people that are involved and stuff like that. I'm not sure if it's like that nowadays anymore, but I I do know know, back in the days it was very much like that. And there was a documentary about it. In fact, I think I watched or something like that. Mm. 1984, the PG 13 rating is introduced, alerting parents to more intense film content. The first motion picture rated PG-13 is? I'm going to take a guess because I think I know it. If not, it's the second one at least. Red Dawn? No. Some random movie called The Flamingo Kid. Okay. I know Red Dawn fell into the the new PG-13 category, Mm. in fact. Anyways, circle back. Video Ventures, renting movies based on their cover. 
somehow, I don't know if my dad rented it or if we rented it or what the fuck. But I remember watching that movie with my dad at home, like at night with all the windows closed and shit. And I was like, this movie's fucking awesome. And my dad's not one for like horror movies or really anything that isn't like a Western. But he always remembers that fucking movie, man. <laughs> it stuck to him. Maybe it gave him nightmares. Did you ever ask him about it? <laughs> I should. <laughs> Picture him like in the middle of the night, like I, I'm pumpkin head. I don't know if it's because. So when he hears the smashing pumpkins, he says that that reminds him of me but he doesn't call them the smashing pumpkins he already <laughs> know where this is going well i mean you know he's <laughs> in limited english proficiency el dad, salvador yeah. he calls them the pumpkin heads but the <laughs> that's awesome that's one thing i didn't know but, about him but he says it the way that he says it which is the Pumpkin heads. Pumpkin heads. <laughs> the pumpkin heads. <laughs> it's the pumpkin heads, Paulo. So <laughs> that's pretty accurate. I almost <laughs> thought he was around the corner right now. <laughs> I tried. I tried. Uh, I, so I think he remember, just gets the two. Do you remember he, he thought my name was Mac for the longest time? Dude. <laughs> I thought I heard How long him have we known each other? <laughs> for Since we were like 15, <laughs> yeah. 16, at least 20 years? Yeah. And he just like found out that your name is not Mac. I want to say within the last ten years, just found out. And I, I be honest with you, I heard him saying it the whole time. I just thought. But he also says pumpkin heads. So <laughs> and he doesn't say Pablo. He says Palo. Palo. <laughs> so he doesn't say Matt. He says Mac. <laughs> like Mac and we and all me. just think it's Matt. <laughs> macaroni and cheese and he's like no i legitimately thought it was mac he's like really this is the time you choose to articulate <laughs> that's funny <laughs> oh man he's something else man so yeah uh, i don't know I, I think that's why i like this movie is because uh, i can remember a time where i would watch it with my dad um and i know that he remembers it and he likes it as well and he'll he'll touch, he'll take time to watch it if it's like on tv like on amc or some shit like that so yeah, m- m- movies like this one, uh, they they just they they make su- such an impact. Uh, you know, there there may there may be um, things you know we bicker about nowadays, like little things here and there that could have been fixed or changed or whatnot and stuff. But what they all did have was some kind of uh, value to them um, that just it, it doesn't it it doesn't come out the same way anymore in some movies and stuff uh, i i still appreciate modern films as they are today but like i uh, you just you're uh, saying Pumpkinhead had some family values to it family <laughs> what kind of fucked up family you think i came from uh i i, I don't i wouldn't say that i, I would say it was more uh, it's kind of a feeling I got when I was a kid, you know, when I was watching movies like like this or Puppet Master or something like that, um, where it had a very dark feel, a very alone kind of feel, a very, like if I sat there and watched it in the dark, I'm sure I'd be hearing things and seeing Pumpkinhead's face all over the place and stuff like that. It was just a very, uh, you know, burning image. Uh, the film itself just kind of felt, uh, I don't know. I I couldn't even place it. I couldn't even explain. It's just uh, it's, it's own breed. Weird. I mean, dude got mad because they killed his kid. Which I think my favorite thing in that whole movie, right? So the premise uh, for those who haven't seen it, fuck, we're like an hour in and we're just like talking about the movie. Our first real episode. <laughs> <laughs> Pumpkinhead is this uh, creature that lives in this like backwoods town which um in real life is topanga canyon so (laughs) not too far that way um and like i guess if you like have beef with someone and you want revenge taken on them you can summon pumpkin head and he'll go and kill them that's exactly what he is he's a revenge demon yeah they even tried like marketing the movie with like uh like with like titles or subtitles of like vengeance or demon or shit like that yeah um so hendrickson his 
So it starts um, with these kids, uh, teenagers, 80s teenagers, so they look like full-grown adults, are driving up to go fucking dirt biking somewhere, and they stop at Hendrickson's so- store. And can, can I jump in just one second? Yeah. I'd like to bring up something about that part that you're talking about, too. One of the funniest things I thought was as they were driving up this mountain all crazy, the one guy tells, tells me, hey, baby, get me a beer, you know? It's just like that cliche, like, fucking, like, fucking, you know, he's like going around, you know, other fucking cars on this windy road and stuff. And they're, I I'm going to live forever. <laughs> just the mentality. I just thought it was funny. I'm sorry. Go on. So they Go pull on. off, hit up Hendrickson's store. They're taking pictures like, oh, how cute. This fucking backwoods country little town. That's where we meet Blossom and her fucking ragtag family. All riding in the back of a truck, too. Dude, like that's what, just what you did in the 80s, man. <laughs> better time. Better time. And so they bust out the dirt bikes. They want to get some 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 rides in. What, what would you say? Some, some cruising time? I don't know. They want to get in some jumps. They end up running over Hendrickson's kid. And like instantly murdering him. No, or maybe did he die later in the cabin? Either way, the the kid ends up dead. And Hendrickson goes over to um, the fucking dirt farm. Um, trip out. The dad, who's the dirt farmer, was the bum from Back to the Future. Is that why I recognize him? Is that the guy I said I recognized? Yeah. Uh, no, I think you met his kid. No, I no, I was talking about the older guy. Oh, yeah, maybe he, he looks yeah, familiar. He's a fucking bum from Back to the Future, um, okay. and he starts asking questions about the old lady who I believe her name was. Uh, what was her name? Uh, Haggis. Ha- Haggis. 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 Yeah, Haggis. 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 Typical She's the one witch that knows, name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's the one that summons the pumpkin head. Um, all of this to say. Uh, so let me just run that out. Summons the pumpkin head. He wants to get revenge on the kids for killing his son. The pumpkin head gets summoned and he starts running amok. And for some reason, Hendrickson's like not down with what's happening. And so he comes to help some of the kids. And, and there's only like two of them left by the end of the movie or some shit. Um, but pumpkin head just fucking walks throughout and just slam people left and right. Smirking. The whole reason I brought that up was because you were talking about the family values aspect to the movie. And for someone who lost his son, his only son, and like has no other family, there's no re- even reference of like the mom or a wife or what. For all we know, is just these two guys just, you know, chugging along. He wasn't all that like distraught about the fact that his son died. No, well, don't forget to get. <laughs> He gave that one guy his killer stare. I mean, you can argue the fact that, like, summoning a revenge demon to rain havoc on the people who murdered your son is taking it a bit seriously, right? But, like, his attitude and his persona was just like, hey, my son's dead. Revenge me or avenge me. What 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 can he do with that situation? The, the only thing he knew that possibly he could do and you yourself brought it up to me i i didn't put the two together the the intro the the original situation that happened uh him is you know lance, lance henriksen's character um uh, forgot his name ed harley, ed harley remember not right. to be confused with ed hardy yeah that's why in that <laughs> scene why. where he goes to see the uh the witch she's like say what you want or tell me what you want you gotta say it and i was like he wants to but <laughs> wrong Ed Hardy hardly. <laughs> but yeah, he uh he, he didn't know what to do, so the, the best thing he could do is uh you know, like you said, take revenge on a, his his dead son and um he went to the local witch to, you know, summon this demon and there we go. That's that's the film in a nutshell. That's that's how it played out. Good times. Absolutely. I will watch it again. Um, I've tried to do a good job of like showing the kids who are 16 and 13, like most of the stuff that I grew up on. So they've seen like a lot of the 80s stuff. I don't know that I've showed them this one. 
and it's perfect. It's the season. Um, I think you wanted to watch it because it, uh, if I can do the math, Hey, it's Halloween time. Mm -hmm. We buy pumpkins during Halloween and this guy's name is Pumpkinhead. And what better way than have a demon that, that gets summoned? <laughs> I mean, that, that lives in a pumpkin patch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One can argue that a better route would be like, hey, are there any horror movies that deal with Halloween directly? You know, you know, around Halloween time, right? Yeah. Yeah. Ha Halloween. I'm saying yeah, Halloween. Halloween. <laughs> okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, I, I, no, but this was a good choice. I love this movie. And again, for the purpose of what we're doing here, low budget podcast about low budget horror, fucking right up our alley. Which, again, you could argue Halloween, but whatever. <laughs> that movie cost what, like sixty grand to make? I, I don't even know. I forgot what it was the like budget stupid was. Stupid cheap. Yeah, I was gonna say it was real cheap. But uh, all right, overall ratings. What do you rate Pumpkinhead? Well, uh, if I were to on a scale of uh, one to five, we're, we're not going stars here. We're going to go skulls. Uh, <sighs> Why don't we go pumpkins? We can go pumpkins. Let's go pumpkins. Okay. All yeah, right. let's do like the rating system. Will The rating icons will be something based on the movie that we watch for that episode. We could do that. We so do that. we can either do pumpkins one to five pumpkins because it's pumpkin head and he was he lives in a pumpkin patch or is buried under a pumpkin patch or beers because if it wasn't for the beers they wouldn't have killed that kid and we wouldn't have had a movie <laughs> or very good point pieces of silver because that's what uh ed uh Hawk, uh hendrickson had to give to the the witch eh, let's go pumpkins fuck it let's go pumpkins okay one to five one to five. I give the movie a three. Ooh, a three. Mm, yeah, Damn, three. dude. Why? Um, because uh, it, 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 it was a good movie. I definitely uh, believe it. it, it um, Are it, you comparing that to like all movies ever or just like in the genre of what we consider to be like B-rated, low budget well, I mean, on that scale of things, uh, if you include all the, uh, you know, just the, the small tidbits, not not that they were anything big, just little things like we were talking about, like the, uh, you know, the left arm versus right arm scene, you know, the dog's grabbing on the Lance, Lance Henriksen's arm. You got, you know, it grabs on the one arm, but, you know, next takeover, it's on the opposite arm. Just little things like that. You okay. Know, I, so, I like so those things to you are negative? Not not exactly negatives, but you know, if I were to just give it a straight up, you know, five, um, that's just really high up there. I believe. I I, I believe it's got to be a very strong movie in order to to get, uh, you know, a five pumpkin rating. I don't dis I don't disagree, um, with that statement, um, because if it's a five, then it's the best of the worst, which. I mean, isn't a bad thing, but like you got to really kind of bring your shit. And if it's that good, then it kind of starts to maybe hit a, a imagine and a imagine it starts to kind of cross a gray line. where like, OK, if it's a five and it's a low budget B rated, then like, is it like then not that thing and then something else? So I kind of understand where you're coming from. Yeah. OK. Um, I was going to give it a four. Four. Yeah. Yeah. We're, I think it's good. We're, like, in the, we're in the same ballpark. Compared right. to some of the movies, like, hey, those two movies we watched, episode one, fuck, man, this thing's fucking Oscar contender all the way, man. Those other movies were whew, hard, but... <laughs> Very hard watch. Yeah, no, which, I mean, which, by the way, so you guys know, that that's really going to be the point of our show as well, is, is, is about, you know, like, the hardest of <laughs> the hard. You know, we're... We're going to be sinking into some uh, really, really bad budgeted movies, you know, just for you guys and just for your entertainment and maybe... Well, a little bit for me, too. Yeah, for, for <laughs> us as well. Yeah, we're, 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 we're big fans of the art. We, 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 love, we love these old horror movies and stuff, and we're not going to discredit them, you know. Cool, man. All right. 
Um, so your three pumpkins plus my four pumpkins is seven pumpkins divided by two. That is a three and a half average rating um, for Mutant City Horror. Not bad. Not Maybe bad we should keep track of that. Here, this is me writing it down. Oh, yeah. I already put it in my notes. <laughs> cool. All right. Till next time, Mutant City Horror. Catch us on the next one. Um, this was Pumpkinhead. We'll see you guys later. Thanks for listening.